Hi, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to use the TI Inspire to help us find a p-value to make a conclusion about um, this specific situation. So what we have is a fitness magazine claims that the mean cost of a Zumba class is less than $12. A random sample of 40 Zumba classes has a mean cost of $11.25 and a standard deviation of $2.50. Do you have enough evidence to support the claim at 5% significance level? This could also say, do you have enough evidence to support the claim at alpha equals 0 0.05? Um, the 5% significance level is the same thing as your alpha level. Um, so with this, we know that we are doing a hypothesis test for the mean. And so our two options are either a Z test or a T test. And the way that you tell is you use the Z test if you know a population standard deviation, and you use a T test if you know a sample standard deviation. So if we read through this, it tells us that we have a random sample. And it tells us part of this random sample is that the random sample has a mean cost of 1125 and a standard deviation of 250. So for this one, sigma is unknown. Remember that sigma is our notation for population standard deviation. Um, we know that this sample standard deviation is $2.50. Okay, um, so since we know the sample standard deviation, this leads us to using a t-test. And the conditions for different texts are different, so please make sure that you refer to your textbook for all conditions and expectations that you are required for your course. Um, for the textbook that I'm currently using, the conditions to use the t-test are that you have to um, know the sample standard deviation instead of the population standard deviation, and you have to have a sample size that is greater than or equal to 30, or it has to be normally distributed. Uh, since n equals 40, we are okay with the sample size of 30. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for the... And the last thing that we have to know is random sample. We have to have a random sample. Randomization is important. Um, like I said, there are other conditions that some textbooks list, so please make sure to check your text for all of the conditions. Um, one thing I have noticed is that statistics textbooks are very different. So once you have determined which test you are using, so this is the t-test is what we're using, you want to set up your null and your alternative. Remember that the null hypothesis always has to contain equality. Um, some textbooks just teach it using equals only. Um, the textbook that I currently teach from uses less than or equal to, equal to, or greater than or equal to. It always has to be the opposite of the alternative. So what we need to do is look at our claim. For this one, it's saying that the cost is less than $12, which means it does not um, include it. So mu, remember, is the notation that we use for population mean. The sample mean, this one right here, is x bar because the sample mean is x bar. So make sure that you know your notation. In the null and the alternative, we always use mu. So mu is less than 12 is our alternative and this is our claim. The opposite of this would be that the mean is greater than or equal to 12. So we have to write down all of our important information to find our um, standardized test statistic. So x bar is our sample mean. We need to know our sample standard deviation, which we already said was 250. We need to know our sample size, which is 40. And if you were using a table, you would need to know the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom for this one is n minus 1, which is 39. And we need to know our alpha level. So our alpha level for this one is 0 0.05. So for this, we are going to use a p-value. And like I said, I'm going to use the TI Inspire to help us out with this. Um, we know that this is a left tail test, so when we draw our model out we know that we will shade the left tail only. So let's get our p-value to see approximately how much area we should shade. So if we run the test, remember that the way that the standardized test statistic is found is we use t equals x bar minus mu divided by s 
over the square root of n. And if you are calculating this by hand or plugging it into a regular calculator, make sure that you include the parentheses where I included them, or else you will get the wrong calculations. So if we plug this in, we have 1125 minus 12. This always comes from our null hypothesis. Divided by 250 divided by the square root of 40. So like I said, I'm going to use the calculator to help me calculate this value. Um, this is showing work, so in case you have someone as a um, teacher or professor that wants you to show all of your work, as um, should be done in, when you are learning, um, make sure that you include the formula in your calculations. So we're going to use a calculator screen. And we're going to go to option six, and this time we're going to go to stat tests. And we're going to choose the t-tests. We don't have the data. We would use that if we had information to plug into a spreadsheet screen. So we would do stats and OK. And then our mu naught is going to be whatever we have in the null hypothesis, which is 12. Our x bar is 11.25. The standard deviation is 250. And the sample size is 40. And the alternative hypothesis is always the same. Um, so for this one, we would use mu is less than mu naught because our alternative was less than. After that, you just hit OK, and it runs the test for you. This is your standardized test statistic, the negative 1.897. And your p-value is the probability of getting this test statistic. So for this, we would put down the negative 1.89. 737. And our p-value, remember the p-value, all this is is it's the probability of getting a sample mean that is less than 1125 if the population mean were truly 12 with a standard deviation of 250. So the probability of getting this is 0 0.0326 which is not very likely. So if we go over here and shade about 3% of the area, um, we can say that t is negative 1.897. I'm just going to abbreviate. And this would be our p-value right here. Okay. Um, remember that our decision rule that we use, so the rule that we use is if p is less than or equal to alpha, we reject. If p is greater than alpha, we fail to reject. So this is how we are going to make our conclusion for this one. So we're going to compare our p-value to alpha. And as you can see, our p-value is 0 0.0326. Our alpha is 0 0.05. So this is less than, so since the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. So then we go back up and we look to see, okay, um, we're rejecting this, which means that the evidence points towards the alternative being true. So we could say that at alpha equals 0 0.05, or you could say at 5% at significance level, or you could say at 5%, um, there is enough evidence And then because our claim was about the alternative, there is enough evidence to support the claim that the mean cost of a Zumba class is less than $12.
So just to recap with a hypothesis test, it is a lengthy process. Um, you always have to figure out which test you're using based on the conditions and make sure that you can run that test. State your null and your alternative. And like I said, all textbooks are different, so make sure you check yours for your conditions. Um, then you would go through and run the standardized test statistic, calculate, find the p-value, and then make your decision whether you're going to reject or fail to reject, and then write it back in context. As always, thanks for watching.